Hello and welcome back to the Nasty Metal Production Channel Grid YouTube and welcome to another album of the week. This is episode number 161 and today's episode is focused on Wiped Out, the second classic full-length album from, of course, the legendary new wave of British heavy metal band Raven, which was uh, actually released on June 3rd of 1982 through, of course, Neat Records. Now, by the time I'm recording this, I mean, it's June 4th, but Friday was, of course, was June 3rd. That means this album has already reached its 40th anniversary. So, 40 years, and, of course, to easily, probably up there as one of the best to come out of the new wave or British heavy metal movement. And I think it ranks up there at least pretty much next to, uh, I guess, the first two Iron Maiden albums. Or I guess even people would uh, throw in, you know, like, Number of the Beast. But even Wheels of Steel, Strong Arm of the Law, Denim and Leather. Uh, let's say even, like, High and Dry or On Through the Night from, of course, Def Leppard. And any of the classics, of course, from Venom and Tigers of Pantang. Any of those... It belongs there, but I think even in general, this belongs probably up there as one of the best metal records in general. And since this was released on the same year as classics like Restless and Wild, Screaming for Vengeance, and of course, The Number of the Beast, and so on. I mean, even this probably I would put even next to like Ace of Spades or... Uh, even, I guess, even at times, if it's, I think it's somewhat better than British Steel from Judas Priest as well. I, I think this is really up there as one of the, the, one of the crowning uh, achievements, of course, when it comes to metal. I think an album that really de helps define metal in the 1980s. And, I mean, this was a very influential album, but I'll get into all of that. But it's just, again, happy anniversary to an album that I think helped really solidify Raven and really kind of brought a lot of eyes and ears onto them, uh, both, I think, uh, worldwide and everything, especially in the underground. This really did. And, again, a very deserving achievement to an album, to a band, of course, that is still uh, you know, going on to this day, who have never split up. And are still releasing quality albums. They released a really good album in 2020. Uh, that, of course, uh, being... Was it 2020 or 2021? No, it was 2020. Uh, again, it was a really good freaking album. That being Metal City. It was a freaking great album. So, again, happy anniversary to Wiped Out. An album that I think really deserves to still, you know, to be celebrated. And that's what we're doing today and, of course, for this week. So, let's move on. So, when it comes to Raven, especially when it came to the very first album, Rock Until You Drop, which was released back in 1981. Uh, of course, after releasing the album, it was, of course, uh, it was released to critical acclaim in 1981. And it definitely led the band to a tour, you know, to, like, let's say Italy and the Netherlands and so on. It was, a, it, it was, in a way, a pretty successful debut album. It was actually, again, one of the first full-length albums to be released on Neat Records. Because, again, uh, following it would be Welcome to Hell from Venom. Again, making Venom and Raven two of the biggest bands or house bands for Neat Records. Who were the uh, were a hotbed for, of course, the uh, the new wave or British heavy metal movement. And I think we really were the... The, the godfathers of it. They were the the main label. So they really, again, uh, they, they were just the bigger label. And Raven and Venom were two of the biggest bands for them. They were their, uh, I guess they're their cash cows in a way. They really were. And the Seven Inches and everything, they, this it, these are the two bands that really defined Neat Records. This, so when you really thought of Neat Records, you not only th thought of Venom, but you thought of Raven. And really, that uh, it, this was where the uh, the success was at. So after, of course, touring and everything, they, of course, get booked back into Impulse Studios in Wilson, England. Which, of course, was, um, 
I would say meet records in house uh, uh, recording studio, which of course then brought in one of their other in house producers and engineers in Keith Nickel, who didn't really produce the first album, but he at least had produced stuff, you know, for like Venom. And he was working with Venom as well in the same year for like Black Metal, which was of course the, uh, the follow up to. Um, Welcome to Hell, but he's working with Raven here for Wiped Out. So, and it's not really stated what time in 1982, but it had to at least been early 1982 where they were booked into Impulse Studios in Walsen, uh, England. And so they laid down at least about, technically it's 15 tracks, but I think it's mostly 14 songs. There might have been, a, they might, there might have been more but who knows, but that seems to be the case here. They laid down at least 15 and only 12 were gonna get picked for the album and what gets left over gets reused for a mini EP, which that would also turn into the Crash Bane Wallop EP. So, and I'll get into to the a little bit of the track listing for the Crash Bane Wallop EP, which again, uh, right here, I might as well, that being the title track, Run Them Down and Rock Hard. Those are the only three songs that were left over from the Wipeout sessions here that got used for that EP. Now, it's not stated what time in 1982 that the Crash Bang Wallop EP was released, but it was probably sometime probably around at least when Wiped Out was released. So that's all I know. Maybe, maybe slightly earlier, but it's not really well... Uh, can we, let, let me look up uh, real quick here. Uh, I should... Uh, I'm on Wikipedia because I'm not getting anything from the... Uh, uh, metal archives, huh? Nothing really there. So I'm I'm just gonna, gonna skip over it right now. But those that's at least as the track listing there. So they are at least the 12 songs that get that gets picked, at least that that got picked. Just to uh, to recorrect myself there, that pretty much gets released through Neat Records on June 3rd of 1982, and that's what we get with Wiped Out, even with its pretty it whether or not you're going to consider the artwork for wiped out one of the w absolute worst artwork for any record to begin with still though it's still sold and it's still uh we still pretty much got a very kick-ass album out of it so let's just go straight into of course wiped out by raven so, the 12 songs for this album, of course, beginning with uh, Faster Than the Speed of Light, Bring Bring the Hammer Down, Firepower, Read All About It, To the Limit, Slash, To the Top, Battle Zone, Live at the Inferno, which of course would be used as the title for the, the live album that they were released in like, what, 1984, I think. Uh, Star War, UXB, 20 slash 21, or 2021, which would, it's a very short acoustic uh, instrumental. And of course, Hold Back the Fire, and finally ending with Chainsaw. So there's your 12 tracks for the album, and the time length for this album, as a whopping 51 minutes. And I guess Wikipedia says 53 minutes, or on the Metal Archives, it'd be 45 seconds. I mean, I said 53 seconds, 45 seconds. However, I don't have my vinyl rip on me right now in the computer. I know it's in one of my hard drives I have with me right now, so I can't really shit tell what is the actual running length on the my vinyl rip, because I would have just gone to definitely with that, uh, the length for there. But I'm just going on at least what the online site said, but it's at least 51 minutes. Just to, to clarify, it's 51 minutes. This of course predates Kill 'Em All from Metallica, which their debut album was at least close to 50 or 51 minutes. But Raven definitely pushed the uh, the envelope for making to see how much length they can put on wax. At least, well, you know, the limits. They can really try and push the limits for at least a, a record. And normally a lot of full-length albums were pretty at least 30 minutes to 40 minutes at least, you know. They were they were at least were pretty under 50 minutes. Raven really pretty much helped push it for at least one of the first long 
metal records we released in the early 80s. So they really did it. And that kind of ends up being the the overall theme for the actual album because of, there's some really long songs on here. I mean, just to kind of go along, at least as uh, musically, it's still pretty much... Uh, just, I guess you say it, it, it builds upon what they were uh, pretty much doing with Rock Until You Drop. But I think they go even few and far uh, further and beyond with Wiped Out. I mean, the title of the album, I think, pretty much summons up the, uh, the overall sound and the overall attitude on this album. They really wanted to set out and pretty much wipe out the... Uh, the listener. I mean, it's of course taken from a song, which was called "Wiped Out," that was uh, recorded much earlier. That I think was used as one of the, I think, a B side. Let me uh, relook this one up uh, real quick. Yeah, it was the the B side to "Don't Need Your Money," but they took pretty much the title of the song and basically pretty much named their second full length album a after that song. So. But I think it's just a fitting title for what they pretty much uh, burgeon everything that they just unleash upon the listener. Just from the opening, uh, I guess, intro for Faster Than a Speed of Light with um, obviously probably John Gallagher's various voice is very much distorted. And, you know, with uh, Einstein was wrong. It, 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 you end up just get completely beaten with the uh, the overall intensity of the song and making it really clear that these guys are off to being the wildest band to be put on record. I mean, Venom may have been known to be kind of real dark due to their uh, the, the themes and everything, you know, uh, very dark and just on purpose trying to shock the listener with it, its themes and at the same time trying to be nearly as you know obnoxious sounding but these guys were kind of were just like i guess deep purple to black sabbath so raven is the same way with uh venom venom are like basically black sabbath whereas raven are like deep purple so this is on purposely trying to be nearly as uh energetic as possible and just show and just how much energy you can put onto a record and this album i think just goes few and far beyond what they were doing with their first album it's like again they were just going even more further into just just being absolute crazy and then of course you know we get a more standard kind of songs you know like bring the hammer down um i guess again to like to the limit slash to the top um, hold back the fire. And UXP, I think, as well is like there. These are more kind of normal songs, but when you got songs, you know, like Firepower as well, and read all about it. Battle Zone, Live at the Inferno, and of course Chainsaw. These guys are showing are really pretty much laying down the blueprints for the speed metal and thrash metal bands that come after this. I mean. You can uh, obviously see where bands like Anthrax would get their uh, personality from. I mean, the whole entire Fistful of Metal album is pretty much uh, a, a completely taken from uh, the, the blueprints from Raven, especially like Wiped Out and Rock Until You Drop. They are definitely playing off w uh, what these guys set out to do. So that's the overall uh, what they're going for. And I mean, ju just for being a three-piece, they just sound like a full-fledged band. Even if, if the production and the mixing and the overall recording is not the greatest, I mean, that's pretty much what you expect anything uh, that was recorded at Impulse Studios to sound. You know, that, that, that was just the overall what the room and everything was in there. It's like... It wasn't that they didn't have a lot of the, the top-of-the-line equipment. It was still really old, dirgy equipment that was not great. But again, the albums that came out of that studio were cons are pretty much still to this day are considered classics. And what came out of there was, again, it was magic. And that's what Wiped Out pretty much was. And 
it was magic put on to wax and it, it just and it helped fuel and create a whole new genre in the end so if deep purple were, were considered one of the the forefathers of what would become speed metal in the 80s raven were pretty much were the offspring of that and they just really kind of even went further with it again just whatever recipe that was being cooked up by bands like deep purple and of course judas priest in the 70s and everything and scorpions raven just took it a a, a top notch further you know just a bit of a step up so they just went further with it but again there's a lot of again it's just classic songs after classic songs for this album again just the overall intensity that you get on here is to be expected again it lives up to the title of the album however i don't want to just talk about the entire record to begin with because i think every one of you that at least that are listening to this right now obviously know that you've at least had grew up listening to this album me I really got into the sound because I'm, I'm going to go into at least this time the kind of to keep the video a little bit more going and to add more because again I don't want to uh, end up coming across as someone who's just going to repeat everything else. What I'm going to do right now is my personal experience with listening to this album because I didn't really get into this album until I actually had purchased this at Recycled Records back in the Ah, jeez. It's got to be at least um, sometime in 2011, I want to take. I think sometime in 2011. And it was probably September time or October time in 2011. And I, when I freaking brought this record home... I was in love with this record. I mean, I was always was one of those that wanted to really get into more of Raven because I was like listening. Because of the first time I was ever aware of Raven was, of course, was the Trick or Treat movie with uh, that had cameos from like Gene. S I mean, Gene Simmons was actually was one of the main. Uh, at least had a pretty good part in that movie, but Ozzy, of course, was one that had the, a cameo in it. And again, I'm talking about the movie that Fastway did the soundtrack for. Uh, again, uh, again, the main kid was what uh, was one of the kids from the uh, Family Ties uh, TV show. Either way, it's the 1986 horror movie. And again, they supplied at least plenty of metal records from Combat and so on and Megaforce to it. I mean, uh, you would see that he would have posters from like Anthrax and... Judas Priest, I believe, as well in there. But dude, there was also plenty of records from like Megadeth, that like would be the very first album, Killing Is My Business, and Impaler, and uh, Exciter. Though I mentioned Exciter already, I don't know if I had, but it would be what, Unveiling the Wicked. But there's a poster in there, of course, from an album from Raven. And... The one I'm going to mention is not the one album you would think that any metalhead in the 1980s would have a poster of. That, of course, was The Pack Is Back, which is one of the more infamous albums from Raven. It's pretty much the album that pretty much kind of really kind of helped really kill a bit of their momentum as a band. It killed their momentum and it left a pretty black mark on their, uh, just on their reputation. Again, now it's all from the, the Atlantic deal. But either way, that was my introduction to them. And as I just saw that, I'm like, how uh, how good are those guys? I'm curious what they sound. And then I, I mean, then I start, you know, diving deep into the whole new wave of British heavy metal movement. Uh, and this would have been like around late 2000, like 2008, 2009-ish. And that's when I started, you know, checking out some Raven songs on YouTube. And it would be like with, let's say, like songs like Life's a Bitch and uh, some of the stuff off of the Mad EP. But I didn't really start checking out some of the really earlier stuff again until like, let's say, I once downloaded actually Rock Until You Drop. And that was my real first uh, introduction to their sound. But 
the first real Raven album that I ever bought physically was wiped out. And it was there at Recycled Records, and it was an original. And it wasn't, the spine was not, you know, in the greatest shape, but the front cover and the back looked fine, and the record was in fine condition. It played fine. It played good. I mean, besides me, a little bit of some surface noise there. It still sounded good. I mean, then again, the recording itself of the album was not the greatest. And so you really kind of times can hear a, a bit of the, the surface noise kind of in the background because of it was not a very good recording and everything. And it, it just... But at the same time, it didn't matter because it just sounded vintage and it's like it's, it's classic Raven. But... When I first put that record on my turntable when I got home, just just the overall, if you saw my look and just saw the way I reacted to this album, I was like, I felt like I was in heaven. Because this was easy, was one of the best records I think I ever bought that day. And the thing was like, I bought this one along with the first Mallet Head album. And then of course, I think the CD copy of Loose and Lethal from Savage. Which I've been familiar with the album from uh, Savage for a long time. And again, another classic new wave of British heavy metal record. But Wiped Out was the only, I think, of all the two records I had bought that day. Uh, Wiped Out was easily the one that I think that was the winner. And it it just, I it was, it was non-stop. I could, there wasn't a day gone by where I wasn't putting that record on my turntable and letting it at least play out the speakers and everything, or let's say even via headphones, because I was like in love with the whole record. To me, as far as picking out favorites, I mean, I really can't. Every one of these songs are great, even including the uh, the little small, you know, one minute, 36, uh, you know, minute uh, acoustic intro or song, you know, 20, 21. And again, it's a just a really good sort of place, you know, in between kind of track, in between like UXP and Hold Back the Fire. Which hold back the fire just sounds more like something that would have more been fit for like uh, rock until you drop. Whereas songs like again, faster than the speed of light, uh, read all about it, firepower, battle zone, live at the inferno, you know, and chainsaw. These sound like a lot like more even wilder than any of the songs off like rock until you drop. This is like kind of the the bit of the teaser of what was going to come, let's say, like, uh, after this, you know, like, went all for one, and at least some of the more heavy, faster songs off of, like, the Mad EP, this is, like, the, the song that would kind of would really define Raven's sound to where they pretty much have just continue, and at times building still upon the, the overall sound of Wiped Out, just the overall intensity. I mean, you can hear that in, like, an album like Metal City, and, of course, uh, uh, destroy all monsters from uh, 2015. So it's like building upon that sound, and that's what you. It, again, this was the album that really laid it down for Raven, and this is was just what I fell in love with, and why I think everyone else had pretty much had fallen in love with the album. This album pretty much became one of the def, the definitive albums for Raven. So it's just a classic. I mean, the guy was a Dan of the Coliseum pretty much states that this is one of the, the crowning speed metal albums of the period. What a... And it, it's just a freaking great record from beginning to end, and I can just go on and on about it. It's great. It's a classic, and everyone knows it. And so, that just brings me here. So, 40 years for this album, and for those who probably who, who love to reminisce and are probably feel, you know, like, I guess the... A little bit of the the itch to kind of pull this record out and re-listen to it, you know, after years. I think it's worth a, another listen. It's worth a, worth at least, you know, to be pulled out again and, li and you know, give another listen. It's a great album. I mean, every of the songs, even the stuff off the Crash Bane Wallach BP are also great. They're just, a, that EP is a companion piece to Wiped Out. So it's like you really can't listen to Wiped Out without listening to the Crash Bane Wallach BP. They all go together because it's all the same recording session. Hell, the Crash Bang Wallet PP is the only one that really contains a song that was actually ever at least contained vocals from Mark Gallagher, the brother of uh, John, who always provide a lot of the vocals to the songs. So that's another sort of little fun fact there. But again, it's a great record. It's always worth the listen. So there we go. If you were at least were there 
when this album was released or one of those that just grew up with this album and you have any sort of thoughts, whether they be positive or negative, you could leave them in the comments section below. But if you've never at least had heard Wiped Out from Raven, I think you should have been stopping this video midway and should have at least gone to at least YouTube and maybe listen to it or even at least gone to your local record store and see if they have a copy of Wiped Out sitting in the uh, the stacks or the uh, just overall the sections or, or let's say your whatever metal section you have if it's in there you know you probably just gone out there and got it which you should it's a great album and it's been reissued plenty of times I know Dissonance has done the more recent reissue of this album there's at least a bit of a box set out there that at least contains the classic albums from like Rock Until You Drop up to about all for one there we go uh, and of course the Live at the Inferno uh, album which again was their uh, live album so there it is so that's it I hope all of you enjoyed this is Heavy Thrash saying I'm out and I'll see you all later take care everyone